All right, guys, going to finish up this run through of Galatians chapter 6. It's a little shorter, only 18 verses, split up into two sections here. The first one is verses 1 through 10. Bear one another's burdens. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. Well, ye which are spiritual, I would say, is talking about people who are indwelt with the Spirit, uh, people who are saved, and um, restore such one in the spirit of meekness. So, uh, to do it in a meek manner. Christ-like, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. Uh, a lot just in that verse, but I'm going to continue. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Just as he said to uh, love thy neighbor as thyself previously. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Verse 10 is a good verse to remember. Let us do good unto all men, and then especially those who are of the household of faith. You know, there's just so much there. I don't really know what to say about a lot of it, you know. Uh, like verse 6, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. It's kind of hard for me to understand, you know, what he's talking about there. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. So who is the him that teacheth in all good things? Is that speaking of you know, the Holy Spirit? So let him that is taught in the word to communicate unto the Holy Spirit? I am not sure. Every man shall bear his own burden. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. That one seems kind of self-explanatory. You know, not to be too prideful of ourselves. Um, be egotistical and boasting. Bear ye one another's burdens. I don't know. There's a lot there. I just want to finish this up. So, final warning and benediction, verses 11 through 18. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand, as many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh. They constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. 
And, you know, I'm wondering if the whole, I mean, the whole of this epistle, and I'm acting kind of weird and stuff because I feel like I'm going to sneeze, but I'm trying not to. The whole of this epistle is, you know, all about the Galatians being deceived and wanting and people trying, Jews trying to put them back under the law. So I'm wondering, you know, if a lot of this context is still in that, you know, For he that soweth to the flesh shall reap corruption. You know, is that is that talking about, you know, trying to please God with the flesh by following, you know, the laws and stuff? Is it still in that context? Or is it just talking about sinning and stuff? And I mean, that's, I mean, that they're probably both applicable, um, you know. But previously, too, he did talk about how no adulterer, no fornicator, ex no murderer, etc., etc., will enter the kingdom of God. So. But he comes back to them talking about people constraining them to be circumcised. And he says that they may glory in your flesh. Uh. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. So as he's saying, you know, the world is dead to me, and, and, and I'm dead to the world. Uh... For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And he's kind of just repeating himself here. So I guess I shouldn't feel so bad when I repeat myself a lot of times, because it happens in Scripture, right, too. But I know it's for us to learn to, to get in a point. And I just do it because of a lack of thought or words. Right? And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy upon the Israel of God. And there's the controversial, who's the Israel of God? And I'm going to say it's Jews and Gentiles who are believers in Christ. It's the body of Christ. It's the church. That's the true Israel of God. Or, you know, people say that the Israel of God is Jesus, I guess. So... Maybe that is something I need to put more thought into again. Uh, but I do think, I mean, it probably is the body of Christ. But I don't know. I, I want to look at more commentaries on that. See, there used to be this thought that the Israel of God is, you know, it's either the physical, literal Israel, it's Jews. You know, saved and unsaved, or it's just saved Jews. But I don't think that those those are not appropriate. Um, you know, people say you know dispensationalists. You want to believe that Israel is always speaking of literal Israel, or it's always speaking of Jews. But the truth is that Scripture tells us that you know the true Jew is not one that is a Jew outward, but one that is a Jew inward, the circumcision of the spirit being born of Christ by faith, Jew or Gentile. Those are the true Jews. It took me a long time to realize that's really what Scripture teaches, but it really does. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with your spirit. Amen. the Galatians written from Rome. It says, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. So I kind of wonder what he means here. I mean, I know, I think he means, you know, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus, saying that he's been persecuted because of his faith, because of his preaching and stuff. What's he mean, let no man trouble me, though?
So, I have a lot of questions, as you've realized, for this whole epistle. And I've studied a lot, too, and I just needed to get back into it. And um, I can tell that this definitely needs an expository. And, uh, you know, it's a lot to do with, you know, salvation, people trying to be saved by works of the law versus faith, so it has to do with justification by faith, but yet it also has a lot to do with, you know, who is the true Israel, who are the true Jews, because he says over and over again, you know, that circumcision availeth nothing, and, um, you know, in Jew, or in Christ, there's no Jew or Gentile, and, um, so there's just a lot there. But uh, that wraps this up. Thanks for watching. God bless.